Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is for you, and happy almost end of the year. That's right, it's December 30th. I'm recording this and I will post, excuse me, my hair is up there all over the place. How is your holidays? Welcome, this is a Mending Monday. I believe this is the Monday, right? New Year's Eve tomorrow, you got some big plans? I don't, I'll be bringing it in with my, my children. Funny, I hit record and the light went down on this. But you know what? We're going to make do. This is how we do. Okay? I put my logos up around me. This is when I was trying to design it. I was looking at that. So I went through and I'm just trying to draw it on whatever I could get. Look, at this was the back of a Compassionate Energy Circle flyer at the Transformational Arts College. Have you tried one of those out yet? Those are great. Oh, it's me, Christiana Carr. Chris Carr, superstar. Yep, all this beautiful divine being right here. Also, sorry, excuse me, my spirit name, Wingish Nibe Mjeki Kwe. That sweet grass water medicine woman. Your friendly, freaky ass medicine woman. How was your holidays? Did you make it through? We all survived, didn't we? Because there's another one. Another flyer for transformational arts. Uh, right, I just went through so many. Right, look, and then in my sketch pad here. Let me see if I can find, right, that it started out kind of slumped in like this, right, because I wanted to put everything in there, but I just, right, it was just too much, it became too, too busy, too busy, right, but the whole concept of having your little in there, right, that's just... Getting within these littles inside of us. This one I kind of like up here in the corner. See where it's kind of like holding the heart, right? Anyway, so that's the kind of story of my logo and how it came to be. All right, look at that. It was like I was thinking of that David. I know uh, David Suzuki, but it wasn't him that designed it. You know that famous picture, the anatomy picture, I guess, right? And then this was uh, my BBS doing her writing and stuff. We were going to work together on that. So, yeah. Mending Mondays, like... <laughs> See, it just went over and over and over. If I, if, you know, I, I get fixated on that. And I just, I got to keep, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep doing it. Right? So... I need to get back at it too. Oh, there's one. Look at that. Ooh, like, like all these pages here. It's mostly my logos trying to get that all figured out. But I wrote a poem on the back here I just noticed. I shine for me, not for you. You may not like it, but it's true. I shine for me, you shine for you. Me. Oh. See, I wrote it on the back. See, it's hard to, to read. So let me see here. May, you may not like, I've tried to hide. Many, oh, many times I've tried to hide the light inside that brightly shines. But it burns so bright. It's something I can't deny. But I erase that. Interesting. I shine for me, not for you. You may not like it, but it's true. I shine for me. You shine for you. Many times I've tried to hide the light inside that brightly shines. It burns so bright. It's something I can't deny. So I got to keep doing. Keep shining that light bright. You too. You too, right? I shine for you too, right? So you can see that you can shine too. We can all do this. You know, no blame and no shame, right? Though there might be others that try to put it on us, right? We need to look at ourselves. If we're being triggered, um, I was triggered yesterday and I had to look at that. And then I had to put down some boundaries and, and step in and do my job as a mom, right? Because if people around your children are not respecting their mother, that's not helping to set an example of respecting your mother. If that makes sense at all. See? I love my mother. I feel a long time ago she went through some things, you know, and I hold no blame. There is no blame. There is no shame. 
well, I like to say there's no shame. I've had, I've had, I've had a lot of shame. Things that I don't need to feel ashamed of. Things that happened when I was a child. Taking the time to get to know myself and who I really am, because I'm not who others say I am. I am me, and I'll always be me. I mean, that's something. Hmm. I really can't change. Like, I'm just going to be me, no matter what. Me crying, me happy, no matter what it is. I'm going to be me, because I can't be anything else. I want to teach my children to do the same, right? To, to just be that. If they need to change for somebody, for somebody to like them, or want to be around them, or whatever, then... Do you want to be around those people? <sighs> Even if those people are like family, they're judging and they don't take the time to actually get to know you. If they're projecting their ideas of who they think you are onto you and then sharing that out, like, we don't know somebody else's story. No matter how close we are to them, we're not in that person's being. We need to be careful not to project our own stuff onto other people. To to judge how they grieve or what they've gone through. Or why they stay in certain things, whatever. There become there's a there's a lot of that. Where we place our own. I just watched this well, I wouldn't say it's beautiful. Um it's called Unbelievable, a uh, uh, a series on the Netflix. And about how when they're investigating, it was a, a, a rape case. But the guy it was a serial rapist that basically left nothing. Cleaned up all all DNA things, whatever. There was nothing. And he slept, sn snuck in when the women were sleeping. You know, so. Um, so. In that show, this was a young girl, and she had two foster moms. Two foster moms had experienced um, rape and whatever. They handled it a different way, and because they didn't see, no, she didn't respond. This young girl didn't respond the same way as the foster moms did. They didn't believe her. And then they did a very damaging thing. The one phoned the police and said, now I don't know if she's just making it up or if this is for attention. Excuse me, that's going to drive me nuts if I keep seeing that falling down behind me. We'll leave it like that for now. Oh, right. Point being, not all of us grieve the same. Not all of us deal with trauma the same. And because, oh, maybe we've experienced the same sort of trauma, but one didn't act the same way, right? So it can't be true because you know what? What? This happened to me, and this is how I reacted. So if, if somebody's not reacting the same, then they couldn't have gone, then they can't be telling the truth about it. We are individuals, and we all respond in different ways to trauma. And it's an inside job, right? It all begins within to see how that is affecting us. To see if we're judging somebody else's trauma because it doesn't look like what we went through. So therefore, it must not be as bad for them. Because, you know, they didn't freak out like I did. They, you know, whatever that is. It can be so shaming. It can be so shaming to somebody who's gone through it and what that little girl went through. So I highly recommend people watch that. Unbelievable. And it's something that still happens to this day that's based on a true story. And even up here, not that's down in the States, but it's up here in Canada, too. These systems don't communicate with each other. You know, my personal experience of going through a CAS thing, they close one file, although this is very similar, and it's the same children. They go, no, we're just ignoring this file, and we're opening up a whole brand new one. So we're not even going to look back, although it's the same kinds of things, right? And, and you know what? I grew up with a very beautiful impression of CAS because my mom said, you know, they were friends. They utilized resources, and I'm so grateful, so very grateful to my mother 
for teaching me how to utilize those resources to, to, to not try to figure it all out myself to do that crazy making stuff, right? To be able to get off the hamster wheel and go talk to somebody else. You know, there's times I, I pull in and I need to because I need to hear what my creator is telling me, what my purpose is, what it is that I need to do. Right? I'm going to get that from the source because I'm going to be following that. Too, too much I have followed along with people. And it's that people pleasing. I tried to please the people. But what's that? I just posted that on the Facebook, right? It can't make everybody happy. You're not tequila, right? That's right. That's right. I, I can't make everybody happy. I'm not tequila. I don't think tequila make everybody happy anyway, yeah? Huh? Right? Especially not the next day after having a tequila, huh? <laughs> Who knows how's that for you? Um, still, it's not our jobs to make anybody happy, you know? That's an inside job. It must come from the inside. So our job, the only person our job to make happy is, is ourselves. Do we make ourselves happy or we open up and we choose to be happy? To look at what we do have in our lives and count those blessings, you know? Do we face things honestly? Are we trying to hide behind stuff? Do we go and confront those things? Face those persons we need to talk to. I know. I know in the family that I was raised, go get the story from the horse's mouth or whatever, that there isn't many that have, have done that in this case. They've taken little pieces, and this is how it appears, right? Because I have not. I've got very few calls to say how things going, to, to, to check in, you know? I had to put my foot down. I had to put my foot down uh, when it comes to my children because it's getting very confusing for them, you know? When my family is going through my ex to see my children. Sure, they're shared children, of course. But how much sense does that make to any of you, okay? That uh, my, my biological family, okay, my children's family, don't contact me to see my children. They contact my ex to see my children. There's no reason that they can't. I have one brother that cults. And yeah, kind of checks in, you know, but it's more about what's going on in his life. So, and my family is great. Let me make it clear. I had a great childhood. Yes, there's some rough stuff in there. Of course, the very beginning of it not the greatest let me tell you right lots of people know lots of them would remember more than i would that that was a very scary time and then when my daddy was there right that was a good time so in no way so any misconception that's out there i had a great childhood but i needed to for my little sake validate for her that, you know what, yeah, there were some things that hurt. And we all have our stories. Every single one of us, no exceptions. Okay, we've gone through some things that were hard for us to deal with that others might say, eh, that wasn't so bad or whatever. You just make it, you know, you're, you're being drama or whatever, right? They like to push that drama thing and say, oh, you're just being dramatic. Oh, you're too sensitive. And how dismissive is that? So I'm telling you right now, you're not a drama queen or king, you know, drama person that focuses on drama, if you're, if you're validating for your little that you're hurt. So if somebody's going to get that back in your face, well, maybe that's not the person to go talk to. Maybe we need to release that in a letter some way, because if that's just going to get us more lashback when we're expressing or trying to place down boundaries and people are getting angry at us for that, that's time to draw in and rethink how much do we share with that person, right? You still need to be connected with them. That's that's fine. But then we need to then learn. Okay. Not sharing this with this person because this does not help me feel better. I feel worse. I feel more ashamed of myself or whatever that is. Or I'm more angry at this and now I've got angry feelings. And, you know, and it just takes us away from being in the now, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I'm a human being. Oh, I am. Oh, yeah, and maybe I tried not to be. I tried to do a spiritual bypass, right? Being, oh, no, everything's so great. Oh, lovey dovey, right? Who knows me? I'd love some shout outs from people that have known me. 
what what's your impressions of me as a person as a mother right am I the type of mother that would ever use her children as weapons as far as you know right because that is something that should never ever happen and I've slipped up I am human I am not perfect but I always tell my children it's okay it's okay to love your dad you know and I want you to have a special relationship with your dad that is true children need both their parents you know as long as they're healthy in their lives because sometimes the best thing is not to have them in close contact with that you know like it wasn't in my and my brother's best interest to have my biological father in our lives while he was drinking while he was threatening to drive off cliffs with us you know while he's taking us into hotel rooms and recording us saying bad stuff about our mothers you know then then right is that a good influence to have in your child's life when that father is trying to turn the children against the mother trying to abuse the mother through those children still you know having an effect and keeping her in fear through those children I'm experiencing that myself So then it's hard. It's hard for us that's been in those relationships and how much and when we see our children acting in those ways that others have acted that hurt us so much. You know, that's difficult. When your power is taken away. You say, no, you have to let them see them. My mother went through that too. No, you have to let them see that's their father, right? So even against her better judgment of keeping us home and safe, the court said she had to, right? So you get to this point, it goes into these systems and they spend a little bit of time with your family and they're making these all time, all important decisions for your children's futures and their lives, but they're not in, in that. Hmm. Yeah. And I see, you know, if you can, uh, can avoid and make a peaceful resolutions to keep court out of it. Keep court out of it if you can work it out peacefully between between us, you know. I wouldn't have done this court thing at all. I didn't need to find the truth. I was trying to find the truth. I was served the papers. I'd asked for a little bit of time, which wasn't unusual in the times that we'd had, right? There'd been before where there'd been a month missed or whatever. It wasn't just consistent. It's more consistent than it was before. But whatever. Look at how messy I am. It's been rough. Thank you to my Eagle sister for coming. She had the Christmas here with us. It was beautiful. There wouldn't have been much of a Christmas without her. My beautiful friends. My beautiful sisters. So, there's lots of beautiful, positive things happening. It's going to be a great year, 2020, because I'm focusing on figuring out what's going on so I know I know how to take care of myself now I had another passing out episode my Vegas nerve got all excited Christmas Eve and I'm so grateful that my big eagle sister was here so beautiful but you know enough of this stress I need to not desensitize myself, but if I'm feeling myself triggered, for anybody, it's a recommendation for anybody, because I mean, I, this doesn't come from me, it doesn't originate from me, stuff that I've learned, um, techniques and tricks and tools and whatever to, to, to try out and see what works. Some things work for me, some things don't. Talking on here works for me, just releasing, you know. So I'm just letting it out, not looking for advice or anything like that, unless I've asked, right? Okay, what was your impression of me? Um, those who knew me, you know, 20 or so years ago, in the good old days before I ever met my ex. 
And that was, you know, still wish love. For sure. I don't wish harm on anybody. He, he went through some stuff too. I wanted to help him heal. I put myself aside because, well, wow, that sounds so much worse than what I went through. What am I crying for? I still, that's something I'm still working on. I'm a human being too. They know superhuman. They say like super Chrissy, right? No. No, none of us are. We need that time to rest. I was just reading that post. Like, look at it in the winter. Everything's resting. And we as human beings still got to go, 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 go. There's a natural time for rest for everything. When do we give that to ourselves? So it's up to us to do that for ourselves. To make that space for ourselves. And for our loved ones. But as we take care of ourselves, that helps take care of our loved ones too, right? And our loved ones don't need, aren't worrying about us because we know we're taking care of ourselves. I want to go see my daddy. I know he's listening to himself. So that helps me. Because I know he'll let me know. Please, daddy, let me know, right? Because don't, don't just go without me getting there. That's something that's been here dealing with for a while. I'm so grateful he's still here. But I know there's times that I don't even want to think about that because the way the family is and I want to go see my daddy. My daddy wants to see his family together and I know when he's going to be pushing himself out. If I had a thing, I didn't even want to call my daddy, right? But then, of course, he calls me. He's still trying to... I want to stress him out with stuff. I want him to know that I'm okay. <laughs> so that if he needs to and he gets too tired, then that's okay. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hi, my daddy's girl. I always was. I had a crush on my daddy before him, and my mommy started going up. He was the calming force in the home. He was like a buffer, I guess, between my mom and I as well. To help. The biggest thing was, all right, I could relax. I didn't have to take care of my mummy. My daddy was bigger and stronger than me, you know. He could do that. So I could go and be a kid for a while. I didn't have to be strong for my mom, right? I didn't have to protect my mom. Until that all fell apart and my mom went to that catatonic state and since then it just just gone down I lost my mom she was my best friend how many got annoyed by me talking about how my mom was my best friend growing up there's an unhealthy thing right so I'm looking at that. I want to have a healthy relationship with my daughter, and I'm working on it. It's not best friends. She is not going to be my best friend. Because I know the damage that did here. When then you're just discarded. So I lost my best friend and my mom. In one shot. Ooh, gone. So. Uh, not healthy. It's not healthy. I mean, we've already got an important job here as mom, as parent. Why do we need to be our kids' friends too, right? Friends and parents play completely different roles, right? Friends come and go. Your parents are your parents forever. 
That's what, that's, uh, mom first. Always mom first. It sounds awful. I'm not here to be your friend. I say that to my kids. Right? You can talk to me about anything, but there's some things that, you know what? It's not appropriate for me to be talking to them about as a friend. Right? As their mother. Right? So. I'll always be mom first. As they get older, I've got one, hey, you know. Can go more into that friend thing, but blah, blah, blah. That's my Mending Mondays. Maybe I'll get up and do a card thing. So, you know, I'm glad the kids left me quiet enough for this long. So, love you. Biggest heart hugs ever. And as you see, right, this is just going out. I'm posting it straight up. Um... That's my editor, beautiful bed head editing. Well, she's moved, so she doesn't have access to Wi-Fi for a while. So we'll see. Um, she said she'd do like one a month, so we'll we'll figure that out, and I'll let you know how that goes, or we'll just keep doing it this way, raw and unedited, right? Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay. Love you. Biggest heart hugs ever. Thank you for being you and shining your light through in everything you do because you know it. This world needs you. Thank you.